She's bold. That doesn't warrant a happy face. Brash. That's what you're elected to sit in that chair for. And outspoken. Bravo! Bravo! This week we feature Senator Malama Solomon as she tours her district during the legislative recess. The mandatory recess is underway for state lawmakers, a time when many elect to hold community meetings in their district to keep constituents up to date. Over the last week, State Senator Malama Solomon has been holding talk stories across her territory, the enormous District 4 that stretches from Kona across all of Kohala and Hamakua to just north of Hilo. DLNR is actually the Kona Hiki. On Thursday night, we caught up with Senator Solomon at Kalani Anaole School in Papaiko, where she was speaking before a modest crowd. We interviewed her afterwards. Well, uh, as you know, I represent one of the largest geographical districts in the state of Hawaii. And uh, this, uh, our district has many diverse communities. So it's important for me, and I've always believed that the uh, five-day mandatory recess would provide me with an opportunity to come back to my district to be able to kuka kuka or to be able to discuss the issues with my constituencies. And uh, it's critical because at this moment the bills are crossing from the House to the Senate so there's still time you know to be able to um, amend uh, legislations or to have community input. Yeah, when you come too late it's, it's not, it's not going to happen for you because the deadlines have already passed. When are you guys going to get it? The senator is known in the capital for yep. her no-nonsense style. So you want you me know, to... people, excuse me, I'm not finished. She speaks her mind and gets to the point. Well, there's no fine print, it's all the same type. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, that's why Livening I'm up some otherwise stale legislative procedures. Accusing us of gutting and replacing and so on, six bills were gutted and replaced. She doesn't back down from controversy. It's a controversial bill, but it's putting Hawaiian Airlines under the public utilities, the PUC. Because Hawaiian Airlines, in my mind, is a monopoly. And as she told the folks who came out in Popeye Co. on Thursday, she says she will not bow to special interests. Not everybody hunts. Not everybody gathers. Not everybody fish. Yeah. But everybody uses the state parks. Okay? Not everybody hikes. So I got to tell all these groups now, all these interest groups with their, and I want to just say it like it is, ranting and raving <laughs> in the legislature about, what about me? I'm telling them, hey, wait, wait, what about you? Because your reasons that you want to access those public and private, those public lands, is for special interest. Similar to what she said in this recent committee hearing on a bill to protect taro lands. So we we're, no, we're no, without the water, it's moot. We're without both. Oh, with, without the water, it's moot. Yeah. The land is not your problem. Okay, you're not understanding Hawaiian mana'o. Hawaiian mana'o was everything was water rights. Hawaiians didn't own the aina. Yeah. The Hawaiian culture, everything is the vaiola. Without the water, you don't have color. So I don't see the nexus in this bill between the water and the aina. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like the protection of taro lands. You know, I have no problem with the protection of taro lands, but the nexus is water. And uh, now, you know, a lot of these groups just want to come out and in my mind just kapu these lands. Why? <laughs> you know, what's the rationale? There has to be some reason as to why you feel compelled to make those statements, not because, well, you know, I want to service my own interests. That's what I have a problem with. And I think that, you know, everybody understands the challenge any political leader has is balancing special interest groups. And, uh, and usually those that have special interests are very well orchestrated. And uh, in today's uh, reality, a lot of them are well funded by monies that are coming from out of state. So these are, our, these are concerns for me when it comes to managing our resources. Maybe you can come forward, DLNR, since you feel that we don't need this bill, or, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so. <laughs> That's a technical term. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Her opinionated manner has earned her a few enemies. Oh, well, you know, I gotta worry about this. Well, you know what? 
That's what you're elected to sit in that chair for. The senator is even the focus of a Facebook page, Malal Solomon Must Go. But now when I'm getting blasted all over Twitter and social internet, calling me the malign senator, this and that, because of my strong positions about trying to get this economy moving. Inspiration. As a political supporter of Governor Neil Abercrombie, who appointed her to a Senate seat shortly after he took office, Solomon has been attached to some of the governor's unpopular initiatives, like the failed Public Land Development Corporation. You know, because as I said earlier, I was a part a lot of this at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I've supported it. But you know, you know, what the PLDC and all of the outcry has made me aware of is that, you know, maybe we need to revisit of how we really are planning and, and for the future for our state. But that doesn't stop her from trying to meet the challenges facing the Aloha State. In the recent past, she's sounded the alarm over Hawaii's fiscal health. Look how many billions of dollars we're spending in higher education and not providing those kind of jobs. Where are our graduates going? As well as its energy future. Me, you're Bingo. out of order. You're out of order. Malama. You know, I, I'm entitled to be angry because I'm representing people. Some families are paying $500. Some I, families now are burning kiawe wood to cook their dinner on the Big Island. And these days, she's concerned over the state's high cost of living. So I think, I think Governor Burns said it right in, in his uh, State of the State way back when. You know, what good is a pristine environment if you can't live in it? And I think that we have finally come to that crossroads in Hawaii as to where we're going in the future. And this is why a home, an entry-level home, is $645,000 because of our, our land situation, our land tenure, how long it gets and how expensive it is to get these permits to build affordable housing you know, to service the next generation. So these are our challenges. Stay tuned this week as we continue our interview with the senator. We'll be talking with her about home rule, both federal and state, and those controversial short-form bills that appear from time to time in the legislature.